I've been slightly worried about our favourite flat earth friend CC Chris from New York Westchester County. He had not released a video for almost an entire month. I was thinking that maybe he'd finally left flat earth behind. How wrong I was because he is back and he is most certainly his old self. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. So, before we start, two weeks ago I realised something ridiculous. There's subscription boxes for snacks, socks and even cheese. But absolutely nothing for people who love real science books. So I've made one, the Simon Dan Book Club. A proper science book box delivered to your door every two months, curated by me. Now, this is only a prototype box, but if you want to register your interest and be notified when the website goes live before anyone else, then you can click the link in the description. It's at simandanbookclub.com. And there will, of course, be a digital version of the book club subscription where you can still get all of the online goodies too. Right then, on with today's video, which as you all know from the intro, comes from the flat earther who calls himself CC. He's back in his work van and he wants to discuss stars. Here we go. But I've been trying to explain to people, you know, how close the, the closest star to us is. Um, so it's about four and a half light years away, okay? Alpha Centauri, is that, is that what it is? I mean, you know, they just come up with these stupid names. It doesn't matter, it's light in the sky, okay? That's all it is. It's a light in the sky. CC, when you're saying that Alpha Centauri is just a light in the sky, you're skipping over what it actually is. It's not a label that someone made up for fun. It's part of a long-standing naming system that astronomers use so they can keep track of objects in the sky. Alpha simply means the brightest star in that constellation. There's nothing mysterious going on there. But this light in the sky, apparently, you can see four and a half light years away. You know what? You know what that comes out to in miles? That's 24 trillion. Trillion. That's a T. Not a B. A T. Trillion miles away. A flashlight. That's what you can see. Just to be clear here, and for clarity, uh, the closest star to us, other than the Sun of course, is actually Proxima Centauri, not Alpha Centauri. Part of the same system, but slightly closer to us. Alpha Centauri is the closest star we can see with the naked eye. Well actually it's A and B together, but it looks like the same single point of light to us. They're not flashlights of course, they're nuclear furnaces. We can see them from that distance because they release a staggering amount of light in all directions. He's talking about a system here that contains two full-scale suns. One brighter than our sun and the other about half as bright. Both pumping out unimaginable amounts of energy. Even a tiny fraction of that light reaching Earth is still enough to hit your eyes. That's why stars remain visible over such huge distances. And again, this isn't a guess. We measure those distances using stellar parallax. The tiny precise shift as Earth moves around the Sun. Those numbers come from repeatable observations. Hope that clears things up, CC. These ridiculous numbers, I'm shocked that nobody's actually come up and asked the professor, do you hear what you just said? You just said that we can see a light that's 24 trillion miles away. Does that make any sense at all to you? Any sense at all? <laughs> I mean, I'm shocked. Nobody has come to say that, but you see that that's when you get the authoritative figure, you know, there. That, that's when you get the person who comes in, you know, get the white jacket on, put the glasses on, get the click, uh, clipboard, and there you go. This is textbook personal incredulity. His mind can't deal with the big numbers, so to him, it's unbelievable. Seeing something from 4.3 light years away isn't weird. Once you realise how bright these objects actually are, space is huge, the distances are huge, but the stars themselves are huge too. Their light spreads out in every direction. You don't need a professor to explain why we can see stars. You just need to acknowledge what stars actually are. Okay. Um... It's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, and and that's that's why everybody's so indoctrinated. They can be pretty much told anything at this point. Uh, I, I I get the space times or the science times. I think I, I don't know who signed me up for that, but thanks guys. I like to get the giggle in the morning every once in a while when I am told that there's planets out there that that look like donuts. <laughs> that's great. 
Wonderful. Astronomy journals report things that are backed by data, light curves and transit shapes and gravitational modelling. They don't publish things just to indoctrinate anyone. They publish them because the universe keeps surprising us. And then scientists update our models accordingly. Or the next meteor that looks like a big joint coming to hit us. Always nice to hear those. You gotta laugh and giggle about this stuff. You see, now I know what's gonna happen, okay? We've got Thanksgiving coming up, okay? Yes, we do. Just tap him, tap him on the shoulder and, and ask him about Flat Earth. Tell him about Flat Earth. No, 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 and no. Negative. You keep your mouth shut at the table. Don't say anything. CC, it's telling that even you're telling people don't bring Flat Earth up at the dinner table. That's because deep down you know how these people are going to react when these claims are put next to everyday logic. Once someone asks even the simplest of follow-up questions, distances, flight paths, shadows, star positions, the Flat Earth model falls apart quite quickly. CC then goes on a five minute political rant before going back to stars. Stars, you can't see light that far away. I mean, you just can't. It would be impossible to see trillions and trillions and trillions of miles and see a light, light years away. It's impossible. Do you have any proof? No, but do you have any proof that I can see it? No, no, here we are. We do have proof we can see them. The brightness of stars follows very specific measurable patterns. Their apparent magnitude matches exactly what we'd expect from objects with their luminosity at measured distance. If they were much closer, they would appear far brighter. If they were much dimmer, we wouldn't see them at all. So yes, we do have proof that we can see those stars at those distances. The measurements line up perfectly, to be honest. Declaring it impossible isn't evidence. It's just a feeling. The data tells a very different story. It's, uh, it's happening now. I, I mean, more and more of us are becoming flat earthers. I don't think that there are, matey. And a few months ago, you were complaining because you weren't seeing enough people join flat earth. They blast something off into the atmosphere, it comes crashing down and lands into the ocean. They say it's in space. Hmm. I don't see any pictures of Earth from space. I see nothing, nothing at all. Goose egg, nothing. I see no pictures from space. Saying I don't see any pictures doesn't mean they don't exist, Chris. It just means that you're ignoring thousands of them that are freely available, updated daily and taken by organizations that don't even work together. There should be a camera on the moon 24 seven. Hell, isn't uh, Voyager 1 still giving us transmissions from somebody's basement. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what, where Voyager 1 really is. Uh, is it in a bunker somewhere or is it on Devil's Island? Who knows? I'd really like to know where this satellite is, if it even existed anyway to begin with. Somebody had to have built it. They took pictures of it. <laughs> Voyager 1 isn't sending back HD video. It's sending very low bitrate telemetry. Tiny packets of data for the deep space network, which uses enormous radio dishes here on Earth to pick up extremely faint signals. Those signals come from a very specific direction in the sky, and they change in frequency exactly as they should based on Voyager's speed and distance. You can't fake that from a basement or a bunker. Thousands of radio astronomers would be able to tell instantly. The thing with CC is that everything he dismisses is based on a feeling, not a measurement. He says that stars are just lights and that rockets fall back down and that spacecraft must be in a basement somewhere. None of that comes from checking how things work. It's just assuming that the universe has to fit inside of everyday intuition. He is gloriously wrong and I for one am glad he's back. I think. Well, there we go, everyone. Time to wrap up another video. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this one from CC. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon Dunn. Have yourselves a good day. And I'll see you tomorrow for a video from Paul Russell, whose entire video title is just Simon Dan. Weird. See you then.